If you've been practicing meditation but been doing it in a, a different way, please let go of the old way of doing the practice and just do this. It doesn't mix very well, the old way as compared to what we're going to be doing. We're going to be practicing something that I call the six R's. Now this is right effort. So it's real important for you to get familiar with what this is. The six R's are recognize when your mind has a distraction in it, where you're not with your object of meditation anymore. And release the distraction. The way, the way you release the distraction is by not keeping your attention on it. This is real important. As soon as you release it, then you relax the tightness that's in your head, in your mind. That tightness is actually how you recognize what craving is. And as soon as you relax that tightness, you'll feel like um, an opening up of your mind more alertness. Your mind is going to be much more clear, agile, and pure because you let go of the craving. Craving is the I like it, I don't like it mind. And I'll explain that a little bit later. As soon as you let that go, and you don't have any distractions in your mind at all. And you can observe with the pure mind. <clears throat> then what you need to do is bring up something wholesome. And the way that you bring up something wholesome is by smiling. Now, smiling, a lot of people think it's just here. But smiling is in your mind. And this gets to be, as you go deeper into the practice, this gets to be extremely important. As you smile with your mind, you stop trying so hard. And when you stop trying so hard, then you can observe how mind actually works. So with the smiling is a kind of stepping back from whatever the distraction is, but stepping back with a light mind, with the mind that's clear and observant, but light, soft, as soon as you do that, then you bring that mind back to your object of meditation. Now your object of meditation is going to be loving kindness. And I'll get, get, get you the instructions in just a minute. And then you repeat staying with your object of meditation for as long as you can. Now these six R's are things that need to be done, not just repeat in your mind. Recognize, release, relax. You have to do each one of those, not verbalize them. And it's like rolling your R's. 
it's recognize, release, relax, return, re, re smile, return, repeat. And it's a flow that you start to get into of doing right effort. Now, when you're practicing loving-kindness meditation, you first start by sending loving and kind thoughts to yourself. Remember a time when you were happy. When that happy feeling arises, it's a warm, glowing feeling in the center of your chest. Now, a lot of you don't, or this is for the people that haven't been, been here before. If you've already done a retreat with me, you'll start out by sending loving kindness to all beings in all directions, in the six directions and then all directions at the same, same time. But for the beginners, Start by sending loving and kind thoughts to yourself. Get that happy feeling going. Then, when it's going very nicely after five to ten minutes, then you switch over to a spiritual friend. A spiritual friend is someone that when you think of them and their good qualities, you really like them. You sincerely do wish them well. Stay with the same spiritual friend all the time. Don't jump from one person to another person to another person. A spiritual friend is someone of the same sex. And they are alive. Some men have asked me if they could use the Dalai Lama as their spiritual friend. And uh, my answer to that is, is, it, is he the same sex as you? And is he alive? But if you use the Dalai Lama, it's a little bit more difficult because you only know him by what you think of him and what you uh, maybe see on the, the uh, internet or something like that. But you don't know him personally. It's better to take a person that you do know personally that you respect and you sincerely do wish them well. A lot of women, when Mother Teresa was alive, they'd ask if they could do send it to Mother Teresa. But it's better to send the loving and kind thoughts to somebody that you know. It's a little bit easier that way. And it's your choice. Now, your mind is going to wander. You're going to start thinking about other things. As soon as you recognize that your mind is thinking about something else, then you've already recognized that your mind is distracted. Release the distraction by not keeping your attention on it. Relax the tightness caused by that distraction. Smile, return to your object, to your uh, spiritual friend, and continue staying with your spiritual friend for as long as you can. So it doesn't matter how many times your mind gets distracted. I had a uh, a monk that was practicing loving kindness meditation and he insisted on trying too hard. 
and he was pushing to stay with that spiritual friend and not not go away and he was doing it way too hard and he suffered for a long time because he wouldn't listen to what I was saying the thing is with the meditation if you follow the directions this is fun this is easy and you learn how to let go of the suffering let go of the pushing and trying too hard. The, this monk was continually trying to, oh, I, I got to be better than I am. I'm a monk. I'm supposed to be better. And I kept telling him over and over, there is no supposed to be. He caused himself a lot of suffering. And every day he'd come and tell me how restless he was. My mind won't settle down. Stop trying so hard. Smile. Laugh with yourself at trying too hard. Let go of supposed to be. My mind isn't supposed to be this way. Yeah, don't sit with your legs crossed. So... <clears throat> this is about learning how to be mindful. Isn't that a wonderful word these days? I just read a, an article about what mindfulness isn't. And I thought that was kind of cute. There's it, People are using this word as some kind of... Uh, catchphrase and they don't have a good understanding of what mindfulness truly is everybody knows what the word is but they don't know what the definition is so I'm going to give you the definition that works in all different aspects mindfulness is remembering to observe how mind's attention moves from one thing to another. How does it move? This is important that you understand this. Because, like my little monk friend, he was trying to make mind be the way he wanted it to be, and he suffered a lot. And he'd become frustrated, and he'd be, even become angry. And he'd start accusing me of not giving him the right directions. And I gave him the right directions. Same thing every day. Fortunately, he was there for three months. <laughs> he actually did start to pay attention. After he, he stopped pushing. This meditation is supposed to be fun. I don't want to say supposed to be. It is fun. I want you to laugh, especially when you're caught by some kind of a hindrance that you know you're causing yourself some suffering by trying to force it to be the way you want it to be. Laugh at yourself with that. The fastest way to let go of an attachment is by laughing. You go from, I don't like this, this isn't the way I want it to be, to, it's only this. Now, do I want to hold on to this and make myself suffer or not? Let it go. So laughing and smiling and having fun is an important aspect of the meditation. So 
the more you can have fun with this and smile with how dumb your mind can be, we're all dumb. And it's okay to be dumb. Just don't indulge in it. Relax into these things. Stop trying to make yourself be a particular way. Observe what you're doing, how you're causing yourself the suffering, and let it go. The definition of mindfulness, what that does is it makes you go in deeper to see how this process works, because this is a process. This is a psychophysical process that we're, we call ourselves. Now you're made up of five things, okay? You have a physical body, you have feeling. This is not emotion. Feeling is feeling. Feeling is pleasant feeling, painful feeling, neutral feeling. You have perception. Perception is a part of the mind that names the feeling. This is pleasant. This is painful. This is neutral. So perception is part of the mind that puts the mental name in your mind. You have thoughts, you have consciousness. What we generally try to do, and we get we're real good at these, these habits, is when a painful feeling arises and we start wrestling, I don't want that painful feeling to be there. I don't like it. You start trying to think your feeling away. But thoughts are one thing, feelings are something else. Sometimes a feeling can arise and it doesn't go away right away. So what? It's only a feeling. Is it your feeling? Did you ask that feeling to come up? Did you say, well, I haven't been depressed or frustrated or sad for a while. I might as well do that now. No, you're not going to do that. Nobody's that dumb. It arises because conditions are right for it to arise. What you do with what arises in the present dictates what happens in the future. If you fight the present moment, if you try to change the present moment, if you try to make the present moment be the way you want it to be, you can look forward to suffering a lot. And it's your choice. That's what I told that monk every day. Why are you doing this to yourself? Why don't you learn and stop trying so hard? As I said, eventually he did. But he caused himself six weeks of pain. Now, the progress in this meditation is going to be fast for you if you follow the directions. Don't add anything. Don't subtract anything. If you've been doing meditation for a long time, sometimes you're going to get caught by not doing the six R's. And your mind is going to slip into a kind of one-pointed concentration. When it slips into a one-pointed concentration, you'll get very blissful. You'll get really happy as long as you have that one point of concentration. But when you get out of that, then the hindrances are going to come big time. And you're not going to like those. And you're going to wish, oh, I wish I could get back into that beautiful state. The six R's are 
me put it this way. The Eightfold Path is all eight folds that are equal. But right effort is the first among the equals. Right effort is the thing that if you follow this and practice it without resistance, without trying to change it, without trying to make it any different than it is, it will lead to extreme happiness and suffering will stop. So, we cause ourselves immeasurable amounts of pain. The Buddha said that we've cried so much in our, our existences that we could fill up the entire ocean just with our tears of the pain we caused ourselves. Of the sadness that we took as this is my sadness. And I'm not going to tell anybody why it happened. So what we have to do is be able to recognize that we're doing this to ourselves and keep softening, keep relaxing into it, keep using the six R's. The six R's will take you to our hot ship. The whole point of doing this meditation, the reason that you're here is so you will change from the old way of doing things that causes pain to a new way where there is no more pain. Letting go of that suffering. And that depression, that sadness, whatever it happens to be. And this is too simple. It's too simple to let go of this stuff. That's what a lot of people tell me. It can't be this simple. Just recognize that you're distracted, release the distraction, relax, smile, return. <coughs> <coughs> That's too easy. It's not always easy, but it is that simple. When the Buddha started out teaching people meditation, if he would have started teaching you some kind of complicated system that was slow to get progress, how many people do you think would have followed him? But today, we have so many different methods of meditation. And I, I have friends that have been practicing for as long as 50 years, 50, 5 oh, years, doing the same practice and not really progressing. Still having the same hindrances that when they started was a big problem. Now it comes up, it's not such a big problem, but it's still there. Why is it coming back over and over and over again? Because you're not doing the meditation and letting go of craving. Mm -hmm.